Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gorgeous third day of summer, 47 degrees, 47 degrees, <coughs> heading to 73 today, man, and uh, we have a little sick dog, the little dog is sick today, we don't know what is wrong with Sancho Panza, let's all wish Sancho Panza a speedy recovery from whatever his problem is, uh, but it is Wednesday, June 23rd, 2021, I believe, on this chilly summer of uh, 2021 day. Well, guys, this will be the, uh, there, there was no problem finding my chronicle of the collapse today because it is the number one story on this planet. The number one story on this planet, uh, according to Yahoo News from NBC News, and I am sure the doomosphere will be lit up with his story. So I'm sure Kevin will be covering this story on Black Bear News at 2 o'clock, so I'd better... Uh, hurry up and beat Kevin to the punch <clears throat> and all the rest of the doomers. Take it away. NBC News. Legal experts define a new international crime. Ecocide. A new international crime. Uh, Miguel Cervantes in the year 1505. 250 years before fossil fuels were invented, uh, when the population of this planet was probably uh, quite a bit less than 1 billion people, Miguel Cervantes, Don Quixote, was talking about ecocide, warning humanity about the road they were taking, and here we are, 500 years uh, later, the mainstream media is catching up with Miguel Cervantes with a new international crime, ecocide. Uh, we have been committing ecocide again. When, when did humans begin committing ecocide? I guess when we climbed down from the trees. Is that when we began a new international crime. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Take it away. Okay, this article from NBC News was published in partnership with Inside Climate News, a nonprofit independent news outlet. Uh, it is part of the fifth crime a series on ecocide, so check out Inside Climate News. I need to plug them. So I guess they're doing a whole series on ecocide, but this is uh, how NBC is distilling it. <clears throat> Take it away. A panel of 12 lawyers from around the world has proposed a legal definition for a new crime that lawyers want to see outlawed internationally, ecocide, or widespread destruction of the environment. The definitions unveiling on Tuesday, <clears throat> I guess yesterday, is the first major step in a global campaign aimed at preventing environmental catastrophes like the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, the deforestation of the Amazon rainforest, and more broadly, climate change. Yes, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, guys, uh, if it only hurts when I laugh, you know, that car, it's always been one of my favorite cartoons of my life, you know, where the guy in Custer's army, is, uh, you know, the Battle of Little Bighorn, which is clearly a lost battle, and he's lying on the battlefield with, like, 40 arrows sticking out of him, bleeding out on the ground, 
and his buddy runs up to him and says, does it hurt? And the guy lying on the ground, his dying breath says, only when I laugh. Uh, if, if you do not have a sense of humor reading this article, if, if, if this article is not funny to you, uh, I feel sorry for you. All, all you can do is laugh. It only hurts when I laugh. Anyway, back to the story. <clears throat> the Netherlands-based, well, we can start by uh, whoever uh, isn't the Netherlands, aren't, aren't they pretty much uh, get all of their money from fossil fuels? I guess we can start, uh, we can start in the Netherlands with uh, the international crime of ecocide. The Netherlands-based Stop Ecocide Foundation, along with a coalition of environmentalists, lawyers, and human rights advocates, that, that's a strange one, human rights advocates has been pushing since 2017 to make ecocide a crime prosecuted by the International Criminal Court. The court currently prosecutes just four offenses, genocide, crimes against humanity, crimes of aggression and war crimes. And I could go off onto a whole other rant uh, on the absolute joke of uh, how few people have been prosecuted uh, for any of these offenses, most of them sub-Saharan African dictators. Uh, as far as I know, not one American military official has ever been brought before the International Court of uh, Crimes Against Humanity or whatever it's called, uh, the International Criminal Court, but that's another rant for another day. <clears throat> okay. If the campaign to criminalize ecocide succeeds. If the campaign to criminalize ecocide succeeds. Okay, guys, there is exactly zero chance that the campaign to criminalize the biggest crime on the planet for the past 500 years, uh, there's zero chance it will succeed, or if it, quote, succeeds on paper, it will be about as effective as the Paris Climate Agreement uh, to do a damn thing to, uh, to save this planet by uh, charging planet eaters uh, with, uh, with you know, crimes against the planet. That's what planet eaters do. They commit crimes against the planet. So you and I can uh, go on to social media on these computers. We can have our little single-use uh, plastic water bottles, although this is about the fifth use I'm getting out of this one here. You know what I'm saying. Uh, every single one of us is every day from the moment we roll out of bed, e even while we're asleep at night, uh, every single human on this planet is, is guilty of the crime of ecocide. If the campaign to criminalize ecocide succeeds, the international court would be able, would be able to hold accountable those most responsible for ecological harms, including business and government leaders. <laughs> uh, good Lord. Yes. Uh. <laughs> oh, all right. A anyway, no comment. Uh. All right, what is the definition of ecocide? The definition released on Tuesday, the result of months of work by the team of a dozen lawyers, defines ecocide as, quote, quote, unlawful or wanton, I love that, I've always loved that word, wanton, acts committed with knowledge 
that there is a substantial likelihood of severe and either widespread or long-term damage to the environment being caused by those acts, close quote. In other words, every time you pull up to a gas pump, okay, like I did yesterday on my gas sucking truck, every single time you pull that gas sucking car of yours up to a gas pump, you are willfully committing an, well, uh, what should be an unlawful or wanton act committed with knowledge that there is a substantial likelihood of severe and either wide, well not either, both widespread and long-term damage to the environment being caused by those acts, such as filling up your gas-sucking car, just buying a car. Okay, uh, you, you are doing this, and of course, I'm, I'm quite sure that you will not see overpopulation, obviously, uh, every time you pop one of your little planet-eating bundles of joy out of the oven. Uh, you have, you are guilty of the international crime against this planet of breeding. So I guess every breeder on the planet will be dragged in front of the International Criminal Court. Okay. If this definition is adopted, yes, as the fifth crime before the International Court, it would signal, it would signal that mass environmental destruction is one of the most morally reprehensible crimes in the world, advocates said. Okay, this is Philip Philippe Sands, professor of international law at University College London and co-chair of the panel. Uh, quote, none of the existing international criminal laws protect the environment as an end in itself, and that is what the crime of ecocide does. Close quote. Yes. The International Criminal Court has not commented on the panel's efforts, probably because everyone sitting on uh, the International Criminal Court is guilty of ecocide every day of their lives. There is still a long road ahead before the ecocide definition could be adopted by the court. One of the court's 123 member countries would need to submit the definition to the United Nations. Yes, the United Nations Secretary General triggering a formal multi-step process that could lead to an amendment of the Rome Statute which sets the court's rules. Now, of course, we do have the small problem that the United Nations is the single biggest bunch of ecocidal criminals ever assembled in one spot. In the history of humanity, the United Nations are the, are, are if you had, but, you know, there's so many choices when you, when you try to figure out who is the biggest group uh, of criminals against this planet, I nominate the United Nations. This will be the single biggest, hilarious fox guarding the hen house, uh, get, get, getting the United Nations to approve, uh, y y y you know, it, it's a level of absurdity. I mean, this, we, guys, we are in the twilight zone. Is there anybody at this point denying that we are in the twilight zone? Okay. But legal scholars say the panel's work could still have effects at the International Criminal Court and beyond, regardless of whether or not ecocide is officially made an international crime. This is David Sheffer, 
a former U.S. ambassador at large for war crime issues. Uh, yes, I I anyway, quote, it is an essential exercise because environmental damage is growing phenomenally. Ecocide, by its mere existence, will heighten the issue of the environment. Close quote. Yes. Uh, all right. <clears throat> you will not, gee, do you believe this, guys? The International Criminal Court's four existing crimes focus on harms to humans, not the planet. So, the lawyers who began working late last year to craft an ecocide definition had to largely start from scratch. They wanted it to be strict enough to be meaningful, but they also wanted it to be appealing enough, appealing enough to win support from most of the world's nations, which are historically reluctant to cede sovereignty to international institutions. Do you think so? This is Nancy Combs, an expert on interla international criminal law from William and Mary Law School. Quote, a perfect definition, you know, a perfect definition does you no good if it's, if it states Ignore it, or worse, because hostile, become hostile to the enterprise and set the effort back. If the panel's calculations are wrong, the whole thing could go bust. Yes. Uh, the definition aims to be less of a sledgehammer and more of a guardrail for governments and businesses that are most responsible for ecological harm. <clears throat> Said Sands, who I already forgot who Sands is, quote, <clears throat> we hope that that approach comes up with something which is potentially effective Sand said, but not, quote, so widespread in its effects that states run away and throw their arms up in horror that every one of their leaders, if not every one of their citizens, is going to be found guilty of crimes against the planet. The definition of ecocide also had to be general enough to address all manner of environmental harms, I guess breeding, uh, since breeding is, is the number one environmental harm uh, on the planet today, it had to be general enough to address all manner of environmental harms and keep pace with evolving science, but specific enough to put would-be wrongdoers on notice of what counts as criminal behavior. <clears throat> the six-month endeavor required an unprecedented collaborative effort between international criminal lawyers and environmental lawyers. Uh, the what? That was just a boiled down definition. The, the official 165 word definition resembles the court's other four crimes in some ways, including by implementing high thresholds like widespread and severe damages. But the new potential crime in differs in one major respect. Harm to human beings is not a prerequisite for ecocide. Unbelievable. 
uh, as harm to human beings is not a prerequisite for ecocide, well, I'm sure the 10 million species of our fellow earthlings would cheer on that. The shift, that shift would be a major development for international criminal law, which mainly focuses on human injuries. Uh, said Richard Rogers, a British lawyer and one of the panelists. The definition of ecocide is also notable for what it does not include. The panel chose not to incorporate a specific list of examples of ecocide, breeding, eating, uh, probably breathing, at least exhaling, uh, buying a gas-sucking car, uh, buying plastic, uh, using social media, you know, those kind of... Uh, the panel chose not to incorporate a specific list of examples of ecocide for fear that something would inevitably be left out. <laughs> yeah, such as breeding. Possibly signaling that the excluded act may not qualify. That choice also had a political dimension. I bet it did. Uh, the panel did not want countries to feel they were being targeted by examples. Yes, said Sands. We felt that it was best to keep that door shut. I, uh, I, asked, uh, I, I, I bet they did. Uh, I'm sure uh, China is, is really uh, shaking in its boots from this. All right. Sands believes the definition would cover actions you know, such as breeding, uh, that contribute to climate change, though the specifics are not yet clear. It may come down to whether the actions are also unlawful under other national or international laws. You know, we could get into a rant about the difference between legal and illegal logging, the difference between legal and illegal mining, we could go on down that slippery slope. Now that the panel has delivered its definition, Stop Ecocide's diplomatic work will kick into high gear to marshal political backing. The support or lack thereof will act as a bellwether for how serious governments are about combating climate change, pollution, and biodiversity loss. Yes, uh, lawmakers from close US, U.S. allies such as France, Belgium, Finland, Spain, Canada, Luxembourg, and the European Union, Union have voiced their support for making East ecocide a crime. Yes, uh, major greenhouse gas emitters, can you say the United States, China, India, and Russia are not even members of the court, but could weigh in on diplomatic negotiations. So, okay, so the U.S., China, India, and Russia Maybe this is the reason you have never seen anybody from any of those four countries brought up uh, before the court for war crimes because the U.S., China, India, and Russia are no longer on the court. <clears throat> if one of the court's member countries formally proposes an ecocide crime, uh, triggering the start of the process, then at the court's next annual meeting in December, uh, the, the countries would hold a vote on whether to take up the proposals. Uh, then 
the countries would debate the crimes definition, a process that could take years or even decades. This is called kicking the can down the road. This is called paying lip service to the clueless uh, little greenies, you know, where they can act like they give a damn about ecocide and then continue to kick the can down the road for decades while the planet collapses. Uh, <clears throat> Yes. In the meantime, Jojo Meta, the co-founder of Stop Ecocide Foundation, expects just the prospect of the crime of ecocide to shift the behavior of some businesses, governments, insurers, and financiers. Well, I will say insurers. Uh, the prospect of the crime of ecocide might shift the behavior of, of insurers to stop insuring irregular homeowners. And lawmakers from around the world have already expressed an interest in enacting their own national ecocide laws using the panel's definition as a starting point. Uh, this is Christina Voigt. Uh, a Norway-based law professor, one of the panelists, quote, even if some states only revise their domestic law, that would be a success. <coughs> but above all, the new definition of ecocide is stimulating debate about whether or not mass environmental damage should be illegal said Meta, we fully expect that attention from around the world will expand significantly as a result of this definition emerging and that public interest and demand for this very concrete legal solution will steadily increase. Oh, Jesus. Guys, it just makes me uh, want to take a swig of water out of my single-use plastic bottle. Anyway, now that I've gotten that out of my way, what I need to do is first I need to get up here and we have to go stack uh, a big pile of lumber of boards that I just bought from an Amish guy that a couple of weeks ago were these beautiful white pine trees sitting on a mountainside in upstate New York are now going to be a tiny house and a couple of picnic tables. So after we stack the boards, I guess our next plan is to pull everything out of my garage. Every last item is coming out of that garage into my driveway. Uh, and probably quite a bit of that is going to the landfill as your old Doomer uh, continues to commit ecocide on this absolutely gorgeous day here in the summer of 2021. And I invite you to come join uh, me and my sick little dog at Bugs in a Jar to commit some side with us. Bye guys. Little dog, are you starting to feel better? You say, Papa, I'll feel better when you f shut up ranting. Oh, you're limping. Uh, this was Basil's dog has apparently injured my dog's leg. Uh. Bye guys.